Welcome to Now in Android, episode number 32. So it's been a few weeks since we've had one of these. On the other hand, the content is a little sparse because holidays, that's what happens during holidays. But a few things have come out, so let me go over those really quickly. First of all, Modern Android Development, the Mad Skills series continues to chuck out content. Uh, we took a look at a couple of episodes from the Kotlin and Jetpack APIs. Uh, series in December, and now we've had a couple more episodes come out since then. First of all, Florina Montanescu has posted something on Room uh, and using Kotlin with some of the Room APIs. Uh, so this is used for uh, local storage access, uh, basically sitting on top of SQLite. You use the Room APIs and you use coroutines, Kotlin coroutines for easier access, especially easier access to doing stuff off-thread, which is what you want to do when you uh, access uh, database objects, isn't it? Uh, there's also information about how to test your app, um, which is sort of an important part of software development, so I hear. She also launched an uh, episode on Work Manager, sort of an overview introduction Work Manager, as well as using some of the Kotlin-based APIs for Work Manager, so check that out as well, uh, especially for work that you need to have execute asynchronously, whether that is deferred work or work that you need to happen uh, immediately. And finally, there's a community tip from uh, Magda Mu uh, with information about how her team was able to use Kotlin for creating uh, code more easily and code that's more maintainable uh, with Kotlin for accessing some of the vendor extension APIs uh, in the Camera X API. And finally, later this week, um, probably before you're actually seeing this thing, uh, we are going to have a live Q&A. We try to do this for each of the mini series that we have in Mad Skills. So we'll have a live Q&A tomorrow with Florina, as well as Yeet Boyar, as well as David Weiner, as well as Manuel Vivo. And uh, they will be answering your questions. I will be asking some of your questions about how all this stuff works and how you can get it to work better in your situation. In Android training, we are continuing to add content to the Android Basics in Kotlin course. Uh, we just had Unit 3 launch, and it's a unit dedicated to the navigation component, explaining how that works, tutorials, code labs, information about how to get that to work in your application, as well as information and content around using some of the other Android architecture components libraries. We've had a few articles come out. Uh, first one on security. Um, Isai Damier uh, posted an article that goes into really glorious detail on some of the background and security and cryptography. And this sort of provides uh, some context for the explanation of why you actually want to look into biometrics. Maybe you think that cryptography is enough, but there are situations that can come up that um, are pretty compelling to pay attention to, and maybe you actually need your user to use uh, biometrics to log in and have that extra uh, security measure of authentication on top of all the other security stuff that you're doing for your situation. Florina published an article on productivity in Kotlin. Uh, now, if you're already using Kotlin, you probably already know this. I'll allow you to just skip that article. That is totally fine. But maybe you have been thinking about using Kotlin, but you're looking for compelling reasons. Or maybe you're a, a true Kotlin convert and you want to use more of it on your team, but maybe you need to convince others about why this is a good idea. So this article provides some of the concrete data information uh, that may be useful to you or perhaps managers, people making the decisions on uh, what tools to use in your situation. So check that out. And then finally, Megan Meta posted the third article in her ongoing series on Recycler View. Chances are, if you're using a Recycler View in your application, you probably have, I don't know, items in that Recycler View. Otherwise, why are you using a Recycler View? And those items are typically clickable, right? You want the user to be able to tap that item and then something happens. So it is a common use case to be able to handle that click event on those items. And it's not necessarily obvious. So Megan, in her article, covers that use case, covers a recommended approach for how to handle those on-click events that come into those items. And then finally, in this short list of things in the now in Android world, uh, this time around, we had a podcast episode post. We did a podcast. It was just Tor and Roman and I. This is a hostful or maybe a guestless episode. We just wanted to collect ourselves together and have a conversation at the end of the year about some of the stuff that had transpired 
uh, during the year in this weird year that we had. Uh, some of the changes in you know how we all pivoted in the way that we uh, did our work and the kinds of work that we were doing, as well as developments in Android and the tool space and ongoing and future developments in both of those spaces. So tune into that podcast for information uh, from us about all of that stuff and tune into Now in Android, the article version for links to everything I talked about. And finally, if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.